Today I've got a screw loose, well, not me, on this Epiphone Riviera that belongs to James that works at Stumac with me. Gorgeous thing. The strap button is spinning. It's loose. Loose screws and strap buttons happen a lot. Sometimes from the factory, but more often when somebody messes with the guitar, uses the wrong size drill bit or something, wrong screw, maybe they're putting a different strap button on, who knows. Make sure your strap buttons are tight, check them out. Otherwise, don't be surprised if, bam, that thing ends up on the floor and you'll be bringing a broken peg head to a shop like mine. By tight, I mean so it's snug, so the screw doesn't turn on its own, and so the strap button doesn't rotate and vibrate around like this one. A lot of times you'll see a strap button that has a felt washer that it goes through. That's more often on lacquer, so it doesn't crack, but you still want to snug that up. There are many ways that you can fix a problem like that. Some of them very simple. Shoving toothpicks into a hole. Whittle wood off of a doll stick and shove it in there. Then I put a little tight bond on the inside of that. You can take a pencil and smash it up and the lid will come right out. Then you've got this nice little funnel of split pieces of wood. I'll put some tight bond down in the hole. Shove the pieces down in there. Then you can reinstall the strap button and the screw will be much stronger than before. Just a crushed pencil. But today I would like to show you a more professional, definitely something that will last kind of way. Blake, my assistant here, is going to show you how to do that. So before we go ahead and start fixing the strip strap button, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It really helps our whole content team keep bringing you free videos about guitar repair. So for the method I'm going to be showing you, you're going to need to buy a dowel to plug this hole with, but we're not quite sure what size that hole is until we get this screw out. So let's go ahead and do that. I got a little Stumac screwdriver kit here. Oh yeah, it's crusty. There's all that sawdust. Whole bunch of nasty crud that just came loose out of there. So the threads on this are measuring about 153 thousandths. And if we use this caliper, we can convert that to a fraction. That's about 530 seconds. So we'll be going looking for a drill bit that's that size or maybe just a little bit bigger. So now that we got our strap button out and we saw all that sawdust fall out of there, we're gonna go ahead and get this Bigsby off so we can start thinking about drilling it out. So I'm gonna be using a 3 16 drill bit. We're gonna mark the length of the screw onto the bit using a piece of tape. So this marks our depth stop. Next, we're gonna carefully drill out the screw hole using the tape as a guide. You wanna go in straight and keep it straight. You don't wanna wiggle around or drill at an angle. So now that we have our hole drilled out, we need to go ahead and find our dowel that's gonna match, and it's just about 3 16 Pretty much a perfect fit. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tape off this area while I'm thinking about it. This low tack tape will be used to catch all of our squeeze out, if we have any. So you can measure the length of your dowel based off your screw or stick it back in the hole and then mark it this way. Either way works just fine. Now cut your dowel to the length that you just drilled or a tiny bit shorter. We're gonna be going for the shorter side so we don't have to come in and flush trim it with a chisel or a saw. So now we're gonna go ahead and file some slots into this guy just so the glue has some place to go in case it needs to. They don't gotta be deep, you know. It's just some place for the glue to go. We're gonna go ahead and be using some tight bond to glue this guy in. Put a little bit on the end of a Q-tip that I took all the fuzzy stuff off of. Spin it around, get it all over the place. Cool. Put a little bit of glue on our dowel as well. And that is just under flush, and we let it sit for about an hour while it dries. So our guitar is dried for an hour. Now we're ready to go ahead and drill our smaller hole and get this guy reassembled. I went ahead and measured in between the threads of this screw and it came right out to about 764. So I went and got a 764 spit. I marked it for our depth and I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to drill it. But first, use the awl to make a pilot mark for drilling. And just like earlier, we're gonna try to be nice and straight, and no wiggles. So there's our new hole. We're ready to go ahead and put this Bigsby back on and screw everything in. This is the moment of truth. The strap button returns. Oh yeah. You can hear it grabbing. 
I'm gonna call that good. No spin, tight grab, I can't twist it anymore. I'm not gonna force it, but it's in there. So this strap button fix is a really common one that we deal with a lot. Another common problem that we have with strap buttons is that the strap pole itself can get worn out and loose. That means your strap starts to slip a lot, which could be really bad news if your guitar falls while you're playing. A couple of fixes for that is that you could get a newer, tighter fitting strap. You could get a larger strap button. You can get these cool little rubber washers, or you could get strap locks. I really love using strap locks. I put them on all my guitars because it makes me feel safe. And buying strap locks is a lot cheaper than paying for a broken headstock repair. All of these things Stimac is selling. It's not outlandishly expensive, so if you want to be safe, you should check it out.